Yo, what's up guys, it's Mick Mick, and today I'm back with the High Round Strategy Guide. I'm pretty excited to bring this to you guys because I completely came up with it um, on my own. And so what I'm doing is staying inside the crafting table room for where you typically craft a shield. It's on the top floor where the traps are and it's right behind the spawn room. I'm keeping one of the doors closed. As you can see, the one that's closest to the bench is closed. So that way there's fewer zombies coming in that direction when I need to go get another shield. And honestly, I'm going to start off by saying this is most likely an exploit. It'll probably get patched because the, the tortoise perk is way too overpowered uh, in this strategy. Because if you don't know, if you pull out your shield and you're holding it in your, in your hand in front of you, you're actually invulnerable to zombie damage. You can't take a single hit until it breaks. Once the shield actually finally breaks, it's going to send out a concussive blast. This is also part of the same perk. So it sends out a blast that knocks down all the zombies. In the lower round, it'll actually kill the zombies. But in this round, it'll just knock them down. They'll stand back up and start going again. Um, also, with the shield on this map, you specifically only this map, you get a sidearm, this little SMG or machine pistol thing. And this machine pistol is super overpowered because it can actually kill zombies at this round and it only takes you know, like half a clip or half like I don't know like 15 20 bullets to actually kill a zombie and the dogs also it's great for it. and so you just keep the shield out the whole time you're running this you want your shield out you don't want your winter's howl the winter's howl is not going to help you at this round it'll help you like clear things but you don't have enough time to you, first of all you don't have enough ammo to survive using that and you don't have enough time to reload typically so you just run around with your shield and as soon as it breaks you go get a new one. The shield costs 1500 each, 1500 points each time you use it, you buy it. And so you have to make those points somehow. You have your specialist weapon, you have the little submachine gun pistol, and that's you have to make your points between those two. And the specialist weapon I'm using is the Ragnarok because I found, I found that it is the safest. I've tried all of them. I've tried all of them actually in this strategy and the Ragnarok's definitely the safest. It still caused two of my downs this game so you have to be careful when you use it. A lot of the times I find that it can glitch out when you use it and you dive straight into it like a huge horde of zombies. It sometimes does even like activate the slam doesn't affect any of the zombies and they'll just slap you and kill you very quickly so so yeah my recommendation is use it when you're in like a safe point in this in this little room that way you you prevent any of those weird random glitches that's happening and insta kill strat very fun very easy obviously <laughs> you're you're essentially invulnerable because as soon as you run out of ammo in your in your sidearm you just go buy a new shield keep shooting you're completely invulnerable even if you're shooting your gun the zombies still can't hit you and damage you um, and then for the grenade, I am using the, the fire bomb because they're, they actually can kill zombies at this round still. And so that's huge. Just monkey bombs just don't really help that much because the, the extreme dog spawn rate, like, like if you go down, you're probably going and you're trying to make a recovery, you'll probably die from the dogs and not the actual zombies. So monkey bombs just aren't really worth it. Uh, and the, the other, my secondary, as you saw, was the Mozu pistol. That's because I spent so many hours playing with it back on like the DEFCON floor. I, I spent so much time getting headshots and all that stuff with it in order to level it up all the way and get the final operator mod that you unlock when it's maxed out. And the operator mod makes it so it's one shot to the head no matter what round you're on. So that's huge, that's awesome. Um, It'd be great for using the DEFCON floor, but see the problem with the with the war room at this round is that as soon as you break your shield, you have to go get a new one because this game is pretty much impossible to survive without a shield, just by the number of dogs that spawn and the number the like the number of mid round dogs and the number of uh, or the number of hits you can take, which is only three hits till you're down. So you need a shield absolutely. And if you're downstairs, every time your shield breaks, you'd have to waste a bunch of time to come get a new one. Plus, it's pretty risky at some time, at some points, because you're trying to like get back to the war room without teleporting to anywhere else, the labs or whatever. 
And yeah, so that's why that's why I figured that if any strategy is gonna work, it's gotta be in this top floor. And specifically the traps just are I mean trap strategies people have been doing them, but I found that this strategy is much safer. I didn't take it down until 38 and that was like I said from the uh, specialist weapon so once I work out some of the kinks to the strategy I'm sure that I can make it to at least 45 without taking it down and uh, once you hit once you hit 40 it does get a, a much more difficult because when your shield breaks it doesn't kill the zombies anymore it just knocks them down they stand right back up and if you're if you're not able to get out of there with the winter's howl in time to get a new shield You'll, you'll probably die just like that, nice and easy. Um, there's not much you can do in those situations. But yeah, the insta-kill strat, as you can see, it's a lot of fun. Just keep rebuying the ammo. And for perks, I would use the exact same ones I'm using because I've tried multiple different combinations. Uh, the first three, you absolutely need Quick Revive, Stamina, Tortoise. Those are critical. Quick Revive is completely changed in Black Ops 4 because it increases your health regeneration speed along with how soon you're able to regenerate. So that's a complete crutch perk now. That's essentially the new Juggernaug, I think. And the fourth one is to increase the, the rate I at which I get the specialist weapon. So that's also really helpful. And here's just the way I took one of my downs. It's complete trash. Treyarch, you gotta fix this. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.